So let's have a look at some of the industry challenges and risks. Um, for those of you working in the industry, uh, maybe very short or maybe already for many, many years, you know that data centers are very complex. And it typically starts with the physical construction of a data center and all the things that you need to think about, whether it's electrical, mechanical systems, physical security, fire safety, et cetera, et cetera. And we know that we need to strike a careful balance and to optimize the money that we have spent on the data center, providing us with you know, the highest level availability that hopefully meets or exceeds the business requirements. So this is you know, quite a complex undertaking. But apart from the design and build, which you uh, by right do, for example, once uh, on your site, then we go into the operations. And that is where, uh, for most data center operator owners, uh, the biggest headache is. Because we very often see customers being confused in terms of you know, what are the processes that we need? What are the core processes that we definitely need to have? What are some of the side processes? To what level of detail do we need to actually describe those processes? Uh, we all know that if processes are too detailed in description, people try or tend to ignore them. If they are too high level, we might miss out, you know, some check and balances to have proper management control over those processes. And, and how do you control that? What kind of mechanisms do you put in? Uh, again, too much control and checks will also lead to frustration. Too little might put you at a certain level of risk. So this is a quite delicate uh, decision that you need to make. And of course, automation. Yeah, especially now when everybody talks about AI and, and supported assistance, uh, you know, the whole mechanism around automation is there. But what do we automate? Yeah, what can we automate? What level of control are we willing to give away to uh, machines, so to speak, that make decisions potentially for us? And then we have the good old battles internally. Yeah, the, the business, the IT, and the data set uh, facility yeah, might have different views or different uh, you know, uh, guidelines to which they operate and as well as different priority. So all that stuff, we need to make sure that is well balanced and ideally we need to use something of the best practices or standards that are already in place and that we potentially could reference. And also there is, you know, quite a bit of confusion in the market. So all in all, a lot of risk. Yeah, you might have the nicest building in the world and you might have a great team, but if the things are not properly under management control, then it's not a well-oiled machine, so to speak, then you still could have a great risk. And sometimes those risks are very much hidden. And we all know that, you know, those things are not desirable because if we have, you know, downtime in our uh, IT and application environment, maybe because of data center related matters, there is a lot of issues that we will get to face. Uh, we get to deal with lost sales potentially and lost productivity. We might even have to pay penalties. We might lose data. And not to forget, we might be in the newspaper in a not too great daylight, having a big impact on our brand and reputation around you know, the customer base that we serve and even future customers. So what is the typical you know, issue in data centers? Why do data centers go down? Now, there is a variety of research in the market, and we've just picked out one here. Again, what you will find out in those various research that the numbers typically vary uh, you know, up and down, but it's not so much about being 100% accurate on the number because that varies per organization, but it's more to give an idea that uh, there is a portion on the mechanical failures, as we call it, uh, the typical UPSs, generators, cooling systems, and so forth. But there's also a large portion yeah, that is due to the accidents and human error. Yeah? And that is where you know, we need to put good focus on. So what are some of the causes of those human errors? Well, uh, it could be the traditional oopsies, right? Uh, we push the wrong button at the wrong time. Uh, it could be that the processes are not well described. Again, over-engineered or under-engineered processes. They might not have the right level of maturity based on, on the business or on the capabilities of the team. Uh, integration, always a big, big problem in many, many organizations. Uh, and of course, uh, as I said, the good old oopsies that we do. But the good news about human error is that is predictable. I think if you will sit down and write all the potential mistakes uh, or issues that we might have in our data center, what could go wrong? Uh, I'm sure you can come up with a huge list uh, of all the potential risk areas and then start describing what you could do about it. 
uh, maybe train people better, maybe put better processes in place, automate it, et cetera, et cetera. So there are many, many things we could potentially do to you know, minimize or maybe even take away some of the risks due to human error. But again, it's a complex task and definitely not an easy one. But it is important. And I, you know, for those who uh, know me, I'm a big uh, air, uh, you know, uh, and flight uh, type of fan, um, and traveling around the world on, the, on, you know, various continents. And I always make a lot of relationship between the data center and the airline industry. And I thought this is a nice picture to show you the. Uh, say uh, issues in the airline industry and I've just taken out two years here 2009 to 2014 where you look at say the number of flights that have increased but you can see here that the number of accidents uh, and you have total accidents and fatal accidents fatal accidents obviously is when human uh, uh, are involved uh, you can see that despite the number of flights and passengers that were increasing tremendously over that period the number of accidents and fatal accidents actually went down. Now, why is that? It's process. The airline industry is very, very rigid and very, very good at processes. No matter how often the same pilot has basically flown the same plane between the same locations, they still go rigorously through this checklist one by one by one, and they always are double checked, uh, you know, between the captain and the first officer, etc. And this is one of the reasons why there are, you know, relatively speaking, so little mistakes happening in that industry. But yeah, it's not about, you know, all those individual parts. Now, here you see a few pictures related to uh, when you step on the flight, all the way from baggage handling, uh, ground control, uh, ATC, the air traffic control, uh, loading of the, uh, the cargo, and of course, having a nice airplane and top-notch service. Now you can have all those services, you know, individually fantastically organized, but what if they are not integrated? Yeah, and here you can see a few examples where, for example, on the picture on the left of this chart, where a you know cargo unit was literally sucked into an, uh, an engine purely because ground control was already giving the freebie to uh, fire off the engines where the cargo uh, people handling at the floor of the of the tarmac uh, had not cleared everything. And you know the other pictures will speak for itself as well. So individually services, yeah, is not good enough. You need to have proper integration to make it all work uh, beautifully. Now let's relate it to the industry. Uh, our industry, the data center industry. Here you see, for example, a simple picture where we have a nice generator, we have a UPS, and we have our mission critical data center, right? All those aspects might work individually very well, but let's say that there is no coordination between those who, for example, execute maintenance on the generator and the UPS. Let's say that they do that all at the same time, whilst you in IT are running the quarterly reporting. Yeah, it's not hard to imagine uh, the mistakes that potentially could happen and you know the result of it. But yeah, we are living in this uh, data center industry where we don't like change. We are very risk averse. We try to keep doing the same thing over and over again. And that is what I always call the uh, white change syndrome that we are stuck with in many cases in the industry. We need to do something about it. Well, how do you know whether you do a good job then, right? Because if you do the same thing over and over again, you think you're doing a great job, then well, you would like to benchmark yourself, of course, against others to see how well they are doing compared to you or the other way around. Uh, and that is, of course, where we come up with this five levels of benchmarking to which you as a data center operator owner potentially could measure yourself against.